They call it the happiest place on Earth, but is it really all it advertises to be? There are many well-kept secrets about Disney and its theme parks. Some of those secrets are awesome, and some are hands down terrifying. You have to decide for yourself if you think Disney is a wholesome, family-oriented company or an evil media conglomerate that only wants your money. From the fact that everything is an illusion at Disneyland to the darkest statistics kept from the public, here are the 20 secrets Disney doesn't want you to know. Number 20. Mickey is hidden all over the parks. There's a super fun scavenger hunt that you can do at the Disneyland Resort, one that not many people know of, in fact. If you look closely, you'll start noticing that all over the parks, there are hidden Mickey Mouses. I'm talking about Disneyland Park, Disney California Adventure Park, Downtown Disney District, and the three on-site hotel properties. Here is a guide that'll help you locate the more prominent ones, but apparently nobody's been able to spot every single one there is. A hidden Mickey is the old-school depiction of Mickey Mouse's classic shape of three circles that form his head and two ears. Hidden Mickeys can be made out of any material you can think of, including plants, decor, tools. They certainly get creative at hiding them. Hidden Mickeys are subtly inserted into anything and everything that is Disney related. The idea actually came from the designing of Walt Disney World's Epcot in the 70s and 80s. The new park is considered to be more inclined for adult visitors as they included alcohol and they took away the characters. So since the classic characters were no longer present, the engineers and architects decided to have a little bit of fun by hiding Mickeys all over the place. What do you say? You think you can spot them all? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the star topic. We all know that most companies at some point make decisions that are very questionable, and the larger the company, the more horrible their actions can be. This is Disney's secret project of the man who became Mickey Mouse. A former Disney employee, a scientist, in fact, claims that Disney's trying to create a real, human-sized Mickey Mouse through horrific experimentation. The whistleblower wishes to remain anonymous because he fears Disney's legal repercussions. And considering the army of lawyers they have on their payroll, he's probably not exaggerating about his concerns. The anonymous man says he worked at Disney's headquarters on a top-secret, horrible project called the Mickey Mouse Man. Disney was trying to mix human and mouse DNA to create a real-life Mickey, but the experiments went horribly wrong, and all they could come up with was a hybrid creature that was clearly in constant pain and also very mentally disturbed. The creature was aggressive, especially towards children, so they kept it secret to keep their image of a wholesome, family-oriented company. It's unknown at this point if they're still trying to create such a monster, but according to the anonymous former employee, they're probably not stopping at Mickey Mouse. They want to create real-life creatures of every iconic Disney character, including Donald Duck, Pluto, and Winnie the Pooh. What do you think of this top-secret project? Comment down below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. There are human remains in the Haunted Mansion. As true as it is that a haunted house is supposed to be scary, the Haunted Mansion ride at Disneyland is not scary for the reasons you would expect. David Koenig, a former Disney employee, wrote in his 1994 book called Mouse Tales, the story of a group of tourists that requested a little bit of extra time on the ride. Why, you may ask? Well, because they wanted to hold a quick memorial for a seven-year-old boy. Considering the awful moment the parents were going through, Disney gave them permission. But as it turns out, the memorial was not the only thing the visitors had in mind. In fact, the group of mourners were spotted sprinkling a gray, powdery substance off the doom buggies. Yep, you guessed it, it was the little boy's ashes. The attraction was immediately shut down until all the human remains could be completely removed and cleaned up. But Apparently, this was not an isolated incident. Not by a long shot. Lots of people decide to scatter the ashes of their departed all over Disneyland. Some of them do it with
without even asking, fearing the obvious negative answer. But still today, every year, several families ask for permission. But rest assured, the answer is always categorically no. Number 18. Most of the American flags at the parks are in regulation. If you've ever been to the United States, seen an American movie, or basically know about their culture, you know that American people love putting American flags, well, everywhere. And Walt Disney was no exception. Not only was he a proud American, but he also exemplified the American spirit of exceptionalism. For instance, still today there are rides such as the Hall of Presidents and the American Adventure in the Disney parks. And while each theme park also has a huge flag at the entrance, there is no other place where the American flag is more predominant dominant and evident than on Main Street, USA in the Magic Kingdom. I mean, there are flags atop each and every building there. But did you know those aren't actually American flags? Take a closer look. You'll notice that they have not 50 stars, but 45. They did this because if they were real American flags under regulation, they would have to take them all down every single night and then up again in the morning. And that would be a very time-consuming task to do every single day. So they decided to respectfully display the nation's flag while still being able to have that classic American spirit added to the show. Number 17. The horses on Main Street really are louder than the average horse. No sound says classic small-town America like the sound of a clip-clopping horse. Wouldn't you agree? As somebody who lives in Amish land, make it stop. Well, the people at Disney definitely know that, and this is why when you walk down Main Street, you'll hear a particularly loud sound of horseshoes all the way through. This is due to the fact that the horses at the theme park are special ones. In fact, they are coated with polyurethane. Not only does this give the horse a better traction as they walk up and down the street, but it also makes them sound louder. This is supposed to make the sound quite cinematic, and it's the perfect background noise to have that small-town America feel. But this isn't the only funny anecdote that involves loud sounds and horses at Disneyland. When Walt Disney first opened the park, they trained the horses to prepare for huge crowds by having them walk in a tent with loud noises blaring at them through speakers. The horses currently housed at Circle D Corral still go through a process to introduce them to being on stage, but the blaring speakers are long gone, because I'm sure it wasn't necessarily fun for the horses. Each horse gets a minimum of 30 hours of training before going on stage. Their work days are four hours long and they get a two-day weekend just like you and me. Number 16. Animal Kingdom sign has a dragon for a reason. If you've ever visited the Animal Kingdom in Disney World, you've probably noticed that there's a dragon on the classic Animal Kingdom logo. I mean, a lion, an elephant, a rhino, sure. But a dragon? I mean, last I checked, dragons have never existed outside of myths, legends, or fantasy novels. But believe it or not, dragons were actually part of the original Animal Kingdom concept. Not just that, in fact, the winged giant lizard was meant to be front and center in a long since forgotten part of the park that was called Beastly Kingdom. Things make a little bit more sense now, don't they? Beastly Kingdom was meant to be the showstopper of the second part of Animal Kingdom, and it was meant to be located in the part of the park that is now home to a little magical land called Pandora. Beastly Kingdom was also meant to teach children about three types of creatures, real, extinct, and imaginary. When Animal Kingdom first opened in 1998, they had already built the first two types, and they had full intentions of bringing the third group to life later. As it turns out, that never really happened, but imagine how cool it could have been. Number 15. Cinderella Castle Has a Secret Suite did you know that Disney World has a secret hotel room inside of Cinderella's castle? Well, it's true. And not only is this room super secret, but it's also extremely exclusive in that you can only stay there if you are personally invited. Disney has recently revealed what exactly the lucky few guests experience during their stay at the exclusive suite. They actually posted a video on their official TikTok account, but this room has lots of historical importance attached to it. The Cinderella suite was actually built for Walt Disney himself, but he unfortunately died before he could ever stay there. Many A-listers and VIPs have stayed in the secret room, which also opens on occasion for competition winners. Amongst the superstars that have stayed at the Cinderella Suite are Tom Cruise and his daughter Suri back in 2012, Kevin Jonas and his wife Danielle in 2010, Neil Patrick Harris with his husband and their twins in 2013, Mariah Carey, Nick Cannon and their twins in 2013, and also Katy Perry in 2014. And these are just some names out of a long list of very 
exclusive and talented people. Some rumors are going around claiming that one family offered the park $400,000 to stay just one night, but they were politely declined. Number 14. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror's screams are fake. The Tower of Terrors, located in Disney's Hollywood Studios, is an awesome ride for all the adrenaline and thrill seekers out there. But for those who have never experienced it, it basically drops the guests directly into the Twilight Zone every few seconds. You can even hear the screams coming from the top of the tower as you walk down Sunset Boulevard. But rest assured, nobody's being tortured up there. As it turns out, the screams may not actually be real at all. In fact, according to a recently published report, the screams are pre-recorded. The next time you're around the Tower of Terrors, listen closely. You'll find that the screams are a little too similar, not to say identical, each go-around. You gotta give it to them, though. The effect is pretty convincing. They studied the acoustics of the site quite well and strategically placed speakers on the walkways near the ride. This is also probably due to the fact that the guests aren't really free-falling into the Twilight Zone. It may feel like they are, but they're not. In fact, they're being pulled. Some very smart engineers have come up with a kind of technology that pulls the elevator car down faster than gravity itself, which results in the awesome butts-off-the-seat levitation kind of effect we all love. Number 13. Real Human Skull in Pirates of the Caribbean Yep, you heard that right. Disneyland's iconic Pirates of the Caribbean ride once had real human bones, and a lot of people think it still does to this day. Imagine giving your body to science, thinking they'll use your remains to help cure a deadly disease somehow, or to make a very cool discovery that'll save millions of lives, but instead, you end up at an amusement park, scaring the hat off guests for years to come. Okay, so we don't know for sure if the human bones in Disneyland's Pirates of the Caribbean are actually real nowadays, but when the ride first opened its doors in 1967, every single one of the skeletons were actual human bones. That's probably not what the people who willed their remains to UCLA's medical center had in mind, but hey, there are worse places to rest forever. The ride was originally imagined as a walk-through wax museum, but Walt himself rethought that after the outstanding success of the 1964 World's Fair, when the company debuted audio-animatronic characters and people in the Carousel of Progress and Great Moments with Mr. Mr. Lincoln. Disney also decided that moving people quickly on boats through a ride was quite efficient, so he decided to employ the same method in his brand new pirate attraction. Number 12. A complicated tunnel system runs under the Magic Kingdom. Legend has it, there are underground secret tunnels at Disney World. And apparently, out of the maybe untrue rumors about the park, this one happens to be true. There really is a complex system of tunnels under Disney's Magic Kingdom. The system is known as the Disney World Utilidors, and as it seems, it's pretty huge. Much bigger than what people imagine. At 392,040 square feet, it's fair to say it's not a tunnel system for children, and it covers quite a large area of the Magic Kingdom. Almost all of it, actually. The only part of the park that doesn't have underground tunnels is New Fantasyland. This is because Mickey's Toontown was added in 1988, and therefore it was not part of the original park. But why did Walt Disney want so many tunnels under his park to begin with? Well, Walt was a visionary, and he had imagined an experimental community where people would live and work right there at the park. This idea was called Epcot, and the tunnels were meant to alleviate the problems of traffic and pollution for the Disney World community. After Disney Disney's death, the Epcot idea was dropped, but they still integrated some of the tunnels for Magic Kingdom. Today, it's used for deliveries to the shops and restaurants in Future World. Number 11. Cats Roam Disneyland for Mouse Control what happens in Disneyland after the last sunburned families left the premises? All the rides closed down for the night, and the exhausted cast members have made their way home to a well-deserved rest. That's when the park fills up again, but not by people. At nighttime, with the veil of darkness, the park is visited by hundreds of feral cats, and park officials let them for one reason and one reason only. Mouse control. Park officials let them roam free as long as they come when there are no visitors around. After all, 
well. The guests are paying for their tickets to see a park full of cartoon mice, not a park full of real ones. Rather than spend time and resources chasing the felines away, they decided to put the cats to work. Word apparently spread around, and now there are more Disney-employed mousers than ever. As it seems, there are a lot of benefits that come with the job. During the day, these corporate cats get to lounge peacefully and relax in any of the five permanent feeding stations. Not bad at all for a street kitty, huh? Now, of course, Disney also tries by all means to manage its cat population as well. Teams of wranglers work tirelessly to spay and neuter any adult feline employee, and any time kittens are found, they are immediately put up for adoption. Number 10. Epcot was meant to be a real city. Epcot stands for the Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow, and it was basically an unfinished concept that Walt Disney had imagined for a planned community. The concept was developed by WED Enterprises in the 60s. Walt wanted Epcot to be a real city that would never cease to be a living blueprint of the future. Sounds very innovative and visionary. And it wasn't just a vision. Walt Disney was supposed to be a huge part of the Florida Project, what we know today as Disney Orlando. He even purchased a massive property of undeveloped land there during the 60s. But what is an experimental community? Well, Walt wanted it to be a utopian, autocratic company town completely controlled by himself. The city would feature commercial, residential, industrial, and recreational centers, all connected by a giant multimodal transportation system. He claimed that he invested in this concept to try and fix the chaotic and ineffective infrastructure created by urban sprawl during the 60s. But some people believe that the city plan was a tad to tell it. Well, that's for each and every one to decide for themselves. Number 9. The Matterhorn has a secret basketball court. Have you ever noticed that the Matterhorn bobsleds never quite reach the top of the fake mountain? Well, that's because the upper third of the mountain is actually open inside. Wonder why? Well, up there there's room for storage, staircases, and the park's secret Matterhorn basketball court. Okay, I know what you're thinking. How could an entire basketball court fit up there? So, okay, it's a small basketball court, but it has a full backboard and net. It's located in a small attic-like space in what used to be a sort of break room for the cast members. You may not know this if you're young, but there used to be climbers going up and down Matterhorn Mountain all the time. They would go into this secret room to prep for performances and to take a break on days with gloomy weather. Later on, they installed a larger break room at the base of the mountain, and the basketball court was sort of abandoned, but it's still fully functional and intact as unknowing guests race around and beneath it. Number 8. They constantly pump scents throughout the parks. So, by this point of the video, you may have guessed that Disney's theme parks are not just a magical place for children to have the time of their lives. It's also a huge, well-oiled machine. Disney is, after all, one of the largest companies in the world. At the park, while the atmosphere, attractions, and characters contribute to the nostalgia and overall sentiment of wonder, the people at Disney spend a ton of resources making sure that not only will you leave with fresh and new lifelong memories, but that you'll never forget them. How can they make sure of that? One word. Smell. Smells. Smell is one of the most powerful senses when it comes to unlocking or engraving a memory in your brain, and Disney knows that. The solution is quite simple. They incorporated pleasant aromas via smellitizers that pump in powerful scents in a very discreet yet precisely timed manner. For instance, they'll make sure you smell a delicious and appetizing candy and pastries scent near the bakery and confectionery in Main Street. This was planned so that guests have an overpowering impulse to buy some baked goods and candy. Candy. Smell can be a very powerful tool, especially when you're tapping into someone's childhood memories. Number 7. Walt Disney would have hated the iconic Partners statue. The distinctive Partners statue located in the hub at Disney World may be one of the most iconic features the park has to offer, right after Cinderella's castle, of course. The statue sits just in front of the castle's elaborate entrance, and thousands, if not millions, of guests from all over the world have taken photos of the statue every hour of every day. The statue humanizes Walt Disney, and at the same time, it inspires awe in people. Ironically, though, while he was still alive, Walt Disney himself was extremely adamant about not having a statue made of himself. And certainly not one that would be placed in his theme park. 
After he passed, his widow Lillian continued to respect his wishes for several decades. So how come there's a statue in full contradiction of what the father of the company would have wanted? Well, the original partner statue was installed at Disneyland in 1993, and it was designed by Disney legend Blaine Gibson, who basically sculpted every single one of the park's statues, even the president's ones. In 1981, in honor of the 200 million guests at Disneyland, they decided to commemorate Disney and Mickey Mouse as the true two figures behind the company we all know today. At first, the statue was put behind a low fence, but so many guests would climb over it that they decided to take it away altogether and let them take pictures with it. Number 6. The Characters Sometimes Get Sued What kind of cold-hearted people could ever sue a beloved children's cartoon character? Could you imagine Winnie the Pooh in court or Donald Duck? Well, apparently, Disney's characters have actually been dragged into courtrooms more than once. Are they being victims of our overly litigious society, or are the cast members really misbehaving from time to time? As recently as 2008, a woman sued Disney because she felt that a cast member dressed as Donald Duck had behaved and touched her inappropriately at Epcot. Don't you ever do that again, or I'm going to call security and tell your stupid friend to stop doing it. The lawsuit was settled. In another instance, two families accused Disneyland cast members of racism towards their kids. The first family, whose last name is Black, claimed their child got mistreated during an interaction with the White Rabbit character at Disneyland Resort in Southern California. The little boy in question was only six years old at the time, and it was on the day of his birthday, too. The parents claimed that the White Rabbit purposefully avoided interacting with the African-American child due to his skin color. One of the first cases occurred in the early 80s, when a performer playing Winnie the Pooh was accused of slapping a little girl at Disneyland. During the trial, the performer actually delivered part of his case in full costume. Number 5. The Boats Don't Really Float Hopefully, most adults that visit any Disney theme park realize that actual magic doesn't happen there. Let's say anyone over the age of 12 years old should know that it's all but an elaborate illusion. But still, you may be surprised about some of the tricks Disney pulls to keep that fantasy going. The boat rides are a good example of this. You probably won't be especially shocked at hearing that the boats don't actually float. They are all on tracks. So they're pretty much like any other ride there, only this one has a bit of water to give the kids the illusion that they're floating around. In fact, they put dye in the water so that guests can't see the track hidden just under the surface of the water. The river around Tom Sawyer Island is dyed green and brown, and there's only about 18 inches of water depth. But you gotta give it to them, it's a pretty convincing illusion. That massive boat really looks like it's floating on a deep river. Number 4. Wait times are often overestimated. It's widely known that the most amazing rides at Disney often come with very, very long waits. Actually, if you want to go on the iconic Space Mountain ride or the Peter Pan's Flight ride, they always tell you that it'll probably be 80 minutes of wait. But as it turns out, this is also a trick from Disney. Think about it. If they tell you that you have to wait for 80 minutes and then it ends up being less than that, there's no reason to complain about the wait time, right? It's all about increasing guest satisfaction. You see, 50 minutes really cruise by when you expect to wait for almost an hour and a half. And in fact, this happens more frequently and more drastically as the parks are getting ready to close in the evening. This is just one of the many Disney hacks that frequent visitors know about. So the next time you visit any of the Disney theme parks, remember that the estimated time of wait is, in a way, a little white lie. This way, you'll be able to plan your day a bit better, and you won't get discouraged from waiting in line for that last ride of the day as the sun starts to go down. Number 3. Disney Jail is Real the last place in the world you would imagine people would misbehave enough to have to put them in jail is probably Disneyland, right? Wrong. People misbehave absolutely everywhere. So how can a theme park that's meant for family fun time address the issue of people doing what they're not supposed to? Very subtly, I'll say that much. Disney has, in fact, employed a number of secret procedures to ensure incidents are well taken care of, but without drawing too much or any direct attention to the matter. And this is not as easy as it sounds, especially with kids on a sugar high running all over the place. 
there are undercover cops and smiley security guards roaming the park at any given moment, and they are so good at their jobs that they constantly and often reprimand uncooperative guests in broad daylight without any other guest noticing. <laughs> he looks like a Secret Service agent, doesn't he? However, the fact that they have perfected the art of making sure everything goes smoothly without making a fuss doesn't mean that some actions can't have very serious consequences that could easily result in major, life-changing punishments. Some people have even gotten banned from Disney parks forever. Blake Lively, for instance, was once arrested for sneaking into the park with her brother. She told the story herself in an interview with David Letterman. Number 2. Why the Waterways Are So Green if you've ever had the chance of traversing the Disneyland waterways, like the Rivers of America, the Storybook Land Canals, or the Jungle Cruise River, you've probably noticed that the water really isn't the color water is supposed to be. Instead, it's always green. Is that a sign of how dirty the waterways are, or is it yet another trick or illusion that Disney's playing on us? As it turns out, it's the latter. Walt Disney really wanted the guests to feel like they were on board a real 19th century steamship or a paddle wheeler. He wanted kids to believe that these were actual, real, free-floating boats. Because actually making a man-made river and having boats roam free was not an option. Imagine the chaos. So he came up with an idea. What if we put the boats on tracks with just a few inches of water, and then we put lots of dye in the water so guests can't see the tracks? And just like that, the idea worked so well that now almost every theme park in the world uses this little trick. Number 1. People have died there. There are many urban legends floating around about people dying on fairground rides or in freak horse-drawn carriage accidents. But do these accidents really happen at Disney World? I mean, they couldn't really call it the happiest place on Earth if people kept dying there, could they? But apparently, accident statistics don't seem to have any bearings on whether a company gets to keep its sometimes misleading slogans. Because the fact is, people have died at Disney World, and sometimes in horrible, horrific ways. There was a heartbreaking incident where a two-year-old was killed by an alligator and also a nine-year-old who was killed by a shuttle bus. These cases are too awful to contemplate, but that doesn't make them any less real. Over the years, there have been several guests' fatalities, including a man who died after being struck by a derailed train car on the Big Thunder Railroad. But not only do guests die at the happiest place on Earth, employees die there too. In 2004, a cast member dressed as Pluto was killed by a float, and in 1974, an 18-year-old employee died after he fell from the moving wall of a rotating stage. As you can see, not everything is what it seems at Disney theme parks. These places are packed with illusions and tricks to either make you believe something that isn't real or to change your behavior altogether. Do you think you would want to visit one of Disney's theme parks after watching this video? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!